prepare for the fair, where we will be supporting our fellow first generation students uh, as they get prepared to go into the upcoming career fairs here at UT Dallas. Um, so this talk will provide some valuable insights, not only to the University Career Center, but how you can maximize your time with these career fairs because internships will be uh, coming up very soon. You'll be able to apply for those and you're gonna be meeting some fantastic and prospective employers uh, in the coming weeks uh, for the career fair. So I wanna turn it over now to my friend Paul, who is going to cover some very valuable information. And we have special guest with us uh, from HUMCAP, which is a very strong supporter of first generation student programs here at UT Dallas. So without further ado, uh, ado uh, Paul, take it away, my friend. Okay, thanks, Derek. Thanks for the nice uh, uh, in, uh, introduction there. I wanna uh, thank everybody for joining today. I'm gonna share my screen. Well, thanks everybody for having me. What a pleasure it is to, to talk to you today. My name is Paul Kralitz. I'm a career consultant with the University Career Center. I'm the assistant director for career education also. And I've got the a PowerPoint I want to share with you. Um, I'll probably talk about oh, 30, 40 minutes, something like that, and then allow time for questions. Uh, why don't we start with a little quiz here? So the purpose of career fairs, I've got an A through E. Um, what do you think? What's your, your best uh, answer there? You want to put it in the chat? I've got meet employers actively recruiting, presenting presents an opportunity for you to network, uh, gain information about your industry, the industry that you're going in, um, and maybe it clarifies your career goals. So, well, y'all are all right. So I'm checking the chat. I see all E's. I couldn't, couldn't trick you on that. So those are all purposes of attending the career fair. I've got some more for you to consider. Um, it's also an introduction for you to explore careers, occupations, and paths. And it may be uh, uh, you're visiting with a hiring manager or an HR person. And they may talk to you about opportunities that you didn't know existed with that organization. It also helps you learn more about um, full-time opportunities, part-time opportunities, co-ops and internship opportunities. Yeah, you know, a huge benefit is learning about the hiring process and what all the company is going to expect out of you uh, in, in, in the application, the documents, the things that you need to prepare, uh, maybe interviews, things along those lines. Uh, you'll learn about job requirements. Uh, you'll talk with hiring managers. And most of all, uh, and I use face-to-face -face quote, um, but face-to-face, -face, and that, that can be in-person or that can be virtual, but it's contact. It's contact with people that can help you. Uh, and it might be a hiring manager. Uh, it might be uh, an HR, a human resources person. But regardless, it allows them to put a name with a face and to learn more about you. And we'll talk more about this in this presentation, tactics for you to make a wonderful impression. But first, there's a couple of things I think that just to get started. And I, I picked two topics and that's how, how do you know what employers are looking for? And then what am I looking for? So how do you know what employers are looking for? The job description or the internship description is huge. It is such an important document. Many times I work with students and they'll, they'll look at a job description. They'll see the title. Uh, they'll see maybe the salary if it's a full-time job or a paid internship, and they move forward with the application. But I submit to you that that document is describing the ideal candidate. If I'm the hiring manager, I probably wrote or approved that job description or internship description. So it's describing everything that they're seeking. It's describing the ideal candidate. Please, if you leave, leave with no other uh, information from this talk, it's the value and importance of that job description or internship description. And the more you can use their words, their terms, uh, the concepts of things that they're looking for in your resume, uh, your cover letter, your elevator speech, which we'll talk about later, uh, and introductions, 
and the interview, the more impactful you will be. I can't guarantee that you'll get the internship or the job, obviously, but I know you'll make a positive impression because you're addressing their needs. And then secondly, what are what what am I looking for or as a student? What are you looking for? And I wanted to share with you. These are the nice competencies. And many times I meet with students and they say, well, you know, I only had a job at Walmart and or I only had a job as a server. And I immediately stop them and say, no, nope, take the only out. That's important job experience. That is work experience that is very valid. Um, and so, uh, and, and what I try to point out is there's some higher level things that all employers are looking for. And I don't from A to Z. So from from you know, from an art museum to a zoo, A to Z, these are competencies that, that we call them work ready competencies that you may have get, gathered uh, through your experiences that need to be highlighted on a resume. It's important. So let's just take a look at some of these. And like, for example, I'll, I'll highlight a couple. Communication. So any examples of communication that you have from your courses, from volunteer work, from student organizations, presentations, those are things that can be highlighted on a resume. Why? Because employers want good communicators. They want people that can communicate verbally and through the written, uh, written word. Uh, other things like critical thinking. So examples of that, maybe on a resume you put academic projects, uh, or maybe you have jobs, previous jobs, part-time jobs, summer jobs that involve you know, analysis and critical thinking and making decisions. Um, the other thing I mentioned, you can, you can read the less rest, but I'll highlight teamwork. Uh, maybe through student organizations, you had the opportunity to be a team, uh, to work on a team and collaborate or maybe in a student uh, um, a project, you were assigned to teams and you worked collaboratively with a group and there was a great outcome with that. So I wanted you to be aware of these NACE competencies and you can see this is nace.web.org, but they surveyed hundreds of employers and they do this survey every year, by the way, and they rank these. Uh, and so these, this is straight from employers. These are skills that they want college graduates to come in the door with. And why that matters to you is the more you can highlight these, these skills on a resume, on a cover letter, um, in, in an interview, it's going to be impactful. Okay, so let's move forward. Uh, along with that is knowing yourself. And it's no secret you know, the, the happiness, you know, comes from doing something that you enjoy. And so part of the, the challenge here is finding a career that you're skilled in, uh, that you, you would be effective in and successful, uh, but also that you enjoy. And so I would just present to you, you know, what 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 is something that that you enjoy doing? What what would be your dream job if I asked you if you could not fail? What would your dream job be? What makes you happy? Um, and then, you know, let's talk about fit, like finding a job that um, that that you uh, feel at home, that you value, that they offer things that are important uh, to you. Uh, you know, oftentimes I say to students and it shocks them, I'll say, uh, you know, you've got an interview coming up. And we, you know, we'll prepare for that. I'll help you prepare. But remember, you're interviewing them too. Because at a certain point, you may get an offer and you'll have to make a decision. And not every company out there is going to be, you know, a good fit for you. So it's something to consider. What are you looking for in a company? Now, I would suggest the University Career Center does have a resource called Focus 2. It's available to you right now. If you go to that website, the password is there. You just put in your email and your uh, password. And it looks at, at different areas, uh, likes, skills, uh, personality, values. Uh, and it also considers what you enjoy in your leisure time. And it compares that with 
thousands of responses and it gives you a little bit more information about yourself, uh, but it also aligns you uh, with careers, uh, career families, specific job titles that might be a good fit for you and your personality. Uh, so, you know, the, and, and I'll add to this, that the tangible ways, so this information, I think this slide, just reflecting on this slide, maybe doing focus to, there, there's tangible ways that this information helps. It, and, it, and it helps you express yourself better to an employer. So I, I would say the better you know yourself, the better you can communicate that with an employer through an elevator speech, through introductions, uh, through the written word, like a cover letter and a resume, and certainly through uh, an interview. So now what? Let's talk about logistics. We've got um, two fairs coming up. Uh, one is virtual uh, through, you know, that you would um, uh, attend virtually uh, like today, and the other is in person. So I wanna give tips for both. I want you to be successful and know what to expect uh, in these different venues. So first of all, let's talk about registration. Uh, so you'll, you'll uh, every student at UTD that is enrolled in classes has Handshake, uh, but you need to go to Handshake to, to set up your account or activate your account. So that's step one is to activate your account. Uh, you'll log in then to Handshake. Uh, you're gonna click on events. Uh, and then uh, click on career. You'll see a little blue emblem at the top. And then uh, you'll see a register button uh, and you'll click register. Uh, you can uh, see all the events. You'll find the particular career fair that you're wanting to attend. By the way, there's hundreds and hundreds of events in there. If you haven't explored just the events tab uh, in Handshake, uh, it's fascinating. Uh, hundreds of educational offerings, hundreds of opportunities to meet with employers formally and informally, uh, and then opportunities to obviously sign up for things like um, career fairs. So please uh, take some time to uh, check that out. Let's spend a little time with the virtual care, uh, virtual fair first. It's a little different. Uh, you, we, uh, you know, initiated this during COVID um, and, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the logistics, so access, the types of sessions you can attend, how to look at employer information, and then preparation. So this is what the screen will look like. So uh, you're gonna go to events, uh, and then you would see the career fair. You would click on that, and you're gonna see a register button. And so you simply click on that. It, You've already logged in, so it automatically registers you for the event. You should get an email, a follow-up email that um, says you've registered, it's complete. Uh, there's an option there to add it to your calendar, which I always like. It just makes it easier uh, to find the link and everything. Um, and then you'll notice available sessions here too, but you know it'll give you the date, the time, um, and then available sessions. So once you go to, to there, you'll see the different employers that are gonna be in attendance. So, and it'll give a description of the name, the logo of the company, the location of the company, and then it'll give an overview of the company. This one is, is a law firm, uh, and this is, you know, a scribe, scribing opportunities. But underneath this, you'll see uh, um, links where you can sign up for sessions. And these particularly show group sessions. They're 30 minutes. Um, and so you'll click on that and you'll register. Um, and, and you'll build out your schedule from there. So you can kind of start from the beginning of the, the fair to the end. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's really, you know, it's a great opportunity to learn, uh, you know, from employers directly. There's two opportunities in regards to sessions. You have group sessions, which you can engage with employers with group uh, in a group setting. Uh, so you might sign up for that. You'll click on it and it'll be you and several other students 
uh, meeting with the, um, the hiring manager or the human resources folks. And those meetings last for 30 minutes. Generally, they're informational. Now, I want to warn you, if, if it's a large group, you may not have to it may not have to talk. But if it's a smaller group, you know, like five people, the HR person or the, the hiring manager may say, I would like to get to know y'all. Can you introduce yourselves? Tell me a little bit about yourself. So that's when you need your elevator speech. And we're, we're going to cover that here in a minute. But um, that's the group session. And the other option is several employers offer one on one sessions or individual sessions. So that is just you virtually meeting with the employer. So it's one on one engagement and those meetings are set up for 10 minutes. Um, and, and, and I would just suggest very careful calendar management. Uh, so if you sign up for one of these, you know, try to, to be there a minute or two early logged in and, and ready to go. Uh, you don't want the employer or hiring manager, you know, waiting for you to join. So just be careful with your your time management uh, if you sign up for for either one of these types of sessions. The other thing that you'll see uh, is the opportunity to learn more about the company. So here is Raytheon. It has their national headquarters. It kind of gives you the job family, how many employees they have, some reviews and interviews information about Raytheon, uh, and then just some tips uh, at the bottom. And I'll also point out a, a website, a phone number, and an email. Sometimes that's people's names. And I would take note of that because you might get really interested in this company. This is a contact. This, this is networking. This person has now met you face to face, and you have their contact information. So it's a wonderful opportunity to uh, make a connection and follow up or even follow them on uh, or connect with them on LinkedIn. So you can learn a lot about the company here. Now, if you set, set up especially an individual meeting um, or, uh, or you're going to an in-person career fair and meeting with uh, an individual in person, it's important to know a little bit about the company. And so that's why this is helpful to know something about Raytheon. But I would also go to their website and I would look at their mission, their vision, uh, accolades that they've received. Folks, that really, really impressive, impresses employers. And if you make a comment about their company or, or maybe you know who you're meeting with and you go to LinkedIn, and you read, you know, a, a little bit about the person you're meeting with and comment. Oh, I noticed in your career that you studied at UT Dallas, you know, uh, and you were in ECS or, or some commonality that you want to bring up. Uh, LinkedIn is also a helpful way to do research on individuals. Glassdoor uh, oftentimes has comments, reviews on companies. Uh, McDermott Library has resources. In the UCC, on our resource page, we have something called BuzzFile, uh, and it, it could be helpful for certain companies. But, you know, the take home message here is do a little research on the company and the person you're meeting with, if possible. Uh, and that that could make a huge difference. It, it, it's almost like an automatic way to connect with the person. So that's virtual. I've got a slide here on the in person career fair too. And, and and so what do you need to take? Uh, some suggestions, you know, maybe a, 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 a you don't want to be loaded down. You want to be mobile because you might be meeting with. I don't know. Maybe you want to you're going to know who's going to be there when you register. Maybe there's 10 companies that you want to stop at their table. So um, you want to be mobile. You don't want to be lo loaded down with, uh, you know, a heavy uh, backpack and things like that. So maybe a small purse or a small, uh, you know, lightweight backpack. You know, I would suggest maybe a, a folder, um, you know, a portfolio of some sort. You can see in the picture, the young lady has a portfolio. The gentleman here has a portfolio and they most likely have their resumes in there. So I would recommend for the in-person career fair, print out, I would say at least 20 copies 
uh, of your resume. Uh, have them with you, have them available. Uh, also take a pen and a notepad. And I, I, I also added your phone. I know a lot of you like to put contact information in your phones, but some way for you to take notes, uh, whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, but th those are really helpful things to have. Um, and when you when you introduce yourself, it's handy to have a copy of your resume uh, that you can provide to that person in the moment. Uh, so you want your hands free, uh, you know, for uh, handshaking, if you're comfortable with that. We'll talk a little bit more about dress, but generally it's professional dress. I did want to mention you're going to be on your feet and you may be on your feet for a couple of hours. So consider that you want to be mobile and you want uh, your feet to be comfortable. So, you know, professional dress, but maybe maybe it's your most comfortable, uh, you know, dress shoes. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more on that in a moment. And I just wanted to, to talk about behaviors. And what do you notice in this in this photo that's important? Um, you know, some of the things that, that I might point out is the professional dress. Uh, so they're dressed, you know, in a professional manner. We see the portfolios that they're carrying, the documents, likely their resume. Um, but I'll point out back here that the, the young lady is smiling. They're shaking hands. There's eye contact between her and the hiring manager. There's probably an elevator speech going on at the moment. Um, it appears that this person is engaged maybe with this gentleman. Uh, the young lady over here is waiting patiently. So that may happen. Just realize there's there's going to be, um, you know, some some employers are very, very popular and they are uh, they may there may be a wait. And so just be prepared for that, that you may have to patiently wait. Uh, and when she and generally they're short conversations. So when she finishes with this gentleman, um, you know, she's aware that the, the student right here is waiting uh, and she'll make eye contact and transition and probably smile. And that's your opportunity to introduce uh, yourself at that point. So uh, preparing for the fair, uh, three things I would say. Um, resume development and critique, an elevator pitch that should be practiced, and then appropriate attire. And so resume reviews, we, um, we you know, the University Career Center offers one-on-one -on -one appointments. We've got five career consultants that all do resume reviews no matter what school. So you can set up an appointment in Handshake, and I'll, I'll give you the navigation for that a little bit later. And you can meet virtually, uh, and you can meet uh, in person. There's also a resume critique workshop. So that's uh, an event that's located in Handshake. I think spots are filling up fast, but they're actually employers in this scenario that we were able to get many employers donating their time uh, in certain industries to review resumes and give feedback to students, which is, you know, just a fantastic um, resource. The elevator pitch. Now this is, th this gets its term from, uh, let's say you're interested, I don't know, I just say Amazon, and you get an elevator door opens and you get in and it's Mark Bezos and you have from the first floor to the 10th floor to tell Mark Bezos everything about yourself. But it's a limited condensed version of everything that you want to share with him uh, that perhaps could open doors for an internship or a job. So that's kind of the origin of the term elevator pitch. It's a limited amount of time. And you might also have to do this in an interview when someone says, tell me about yourself. And that's the most common interview question out there. So it can include a variety of things, but generally it's an introduction. Uh, um, and let's just, uh, you, you could Google elevator pitch and see all kinds of things, but I wanted to share an example with you. Uh, if I was doing a real workshop, we would work, work through this. Um, you know, 
uh, you know, step by step. But I thought in this venue, uh, you know, you you uh, you might think individually if someone asked you, tell me about yourself, how you would answer that. And would it sound professional and, and you know, would it would the delivery be good? So here is one example from L.A. Community College. But, you know, it, it's who you are, what you do, some information about you, your skills, your accomplishments, your goals and what you're wanting. And I know this is being recorded, but you might want to take a picture of this uh, if, you, <laughs> if you're like, oh, no, I don't have an elevator pitch. So it, it might be uh, here's some fill in the blanks. My name is so and so and I'm you know, a sophomore I'm pursuing this particular degree at the University of Texas at Dallas. Maybe you share a little bit of the experience that you have and what you're involved in on campus. Uh, your strongest skills or some accomplishments, but you want to let them know what you're interested in and and it's specifically what you're looking for. So it might read something like this. My name's Bob Newhart and I'm a junior pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Psychology at UT Dallas. I have experience in several classes like child development, cognitive neuroscience and social psychology, and I'm also involved in Psychi. And, and I participate in a research lab also. My accomplishments include, and you could fill in the, the, the list, but National Merit Awardee, a cultural scholar, uh, Dean's List recipient, and I also volunteer with Aspire, uh, a Dallas nonprofit which helps incoming refugees assimilate to the United States and learn English. I'm interested in counseling, and I hope to earn a master's in counseling someday, along with play therapy concentration, as I believe I have a calling to counsel children. I'm currently looking for an internship, and I'd hope to start in, uh, in next spring. So that's the elevator's pitch, but I highly recommend this. This is really important. Do you have any recommendations or suggestions for me pursuing this path? So, you know, you've kind of given a, a spiel about yourself that should be, you know, the time frame 30 seconds to two minutes ish. Nobody has a clock, but, you know, so it's a short condensed uh, version. Um, but I do recommend finishing that uh, if uh, if you um, I do recommend it finishing that with a question for the hiring manager or uh, for the HR person. Um, OK. Let's see, I'm getting a message here. I'm still seeing the learn more slides about the resources. Are, is everybody like at the moment? Are you seeing an example? Can somebody um, let me? For me, sir, I'm not. I can see your example slide, uh, Paul. Let me see. I wonder if it might just be delayed for the students. I'm not sure, but I can see the example with the different colored uh, fonts. OK, uh, uh, Kaylin, let me know if you see if you go back to the kind of one that you had drafted, Paul, with the blanks. OK, thank you, Carly. Yeah, there's the blanks. Can you see that, Kaylin? If not, I can screenshot it and send it. No, OK. All right, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll post uh, this one in the chat. And if you want to go uh, to that next slide, Paul. OK. And I'll screenshot it and post it in the chat as well. And we'll post this, Kaylin, too. And that way you can see it in the first Shani learning, OK? All right, thank you, Corny. It's You're probably so my laptop. No problem. OK, so, you know, that that's the scenario you're you're meeting the person. Uh, it, it could be virtual, it could be in person, but we want to be prepared. Uh, and so I, I highly recommend creating this, studying it, perfecting it and then memorizing it. Um, you know, it, it, it's going to come in so handy in so many different situations uh, as you enter into this this phase of your your academic career with internships and jobs and professional networking, but it all starts with some sort of, you know, introduction that tells the hiring manager about you. Uh, and then end it with that question. 
because it, 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 you know, it, it removes any awkwardness. They've learned about you. You've asked, you've uh, identified what you're seeking. And then do you have any, you know, suggestions for me? So now let's get into attire. Uh, attire should look professional, but it also makes you feel confident. There's something about putting on your, you know, your, your dress clothes, um, your best to, uh, to provide just confidence and feeling better. So I thought I would say what not to wear uh, are examples here, obviously uh, shorts, um, open show to shoes, unprofessional shoes, uh, rolled up sleeves. We see a, a tie that's not really tied, open collar, uh, sunglasses, casual shirt. I mean, you see a lot of examples of what, what not to do. And this is more the general lines here, you know, business professional, business casual, business professional for males, business casual for females. And here you see kind of a continuum, you know, least formal to most formal, you know, and I would I would kind of rec recommend on this end of the, the, the more formal because it is a first impression and first impressions go uh, a long way. And uh, there's an old saying, you know, dress for the job that you want, <laughs> you know, so I would if, if you're, you know, I would tend to suggest, uh, you know, a little bit more toward the center uh, center to the more formal side. This is from local jobs. I, 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 you know, a little more specific feedback. So for women, conservative dress, a, a suit with either a skirt or formal pant are both fine. Be sure the, the blouse complements the suit. Uh, do not use a, a plunging head uh, neckline uh, and pants above the ankle or skirt that are too short are not going to be viewed as professional. In regards to uh, makeup, they recommend light makeup, not too strong of a scent uh, or, or deodorant that's too strong or overwhelming. Uh, they recommend bangs, tie it up neat. Uh, avoid playing with your hair. Uh, avoid too, uh, too tight fitting clothes or too loose fitting clothes. Um, and in their you know, view, visible tattoos are a turn off at the professional level. I know that could be controversial, but that's their uh, perspective in this environment. So what do you think? What is most appropriate for a career fair? Left or right? So let's see, the person on the left. Yeah, so we've got uh, a business suit, conservative colors. It's just business professional. On the right, uh, it's, it's maybe good for, I don't know, a nightclub or something like that, but the, 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 the low neckline, things like that might be perceived as unprofessional. So men uh, suit up. They say it's a you know your best impression, a conservative color, and that would be like a gray, a black, or a navy, a collared shirt, you know, with a professional tie. Uh, you want to add, you know, press your clothes pressed and clean, um, and it and you know just wrinkles kind of convey it's just viewed negatively, um, or you know spots or you know soiled uh, shirts, things like that. So. Socks, they recommend dark, dark, uh, dark socks. Um, grooming, uh, you know, facial hair is, uh, tends to be more professionally accepted now if it's groomed properly uh, and make sure your hair is cleaned and styled. Um, you know, even if you have long hair, you know, make sure it's styled and, and stays out of your face. So here we have two options, left or right. And which is the better for a career fair, the person on the left. We have a nice suit, it's dark gray, uh, professional business shoes, uh, collared shirt, uh, professional tie, just a, a sharp professional look. And here might, again, might be, you know, to show off your, your social, um, you know, wardrobe or whatever, or going to the club, but certainly not appropriate for a career fair. So that's probably enough about dress. Um, so practice questions. So I just want you to have an awareness, questions that they may ask you. 
first of all, we've covered one, and that's tell me about yourself. And hopefully you, you, you're on thinking about your elevator speech. You know, they might say something about, you know, what your qualifications. So maybe you visit um, Texas Instruments and you know they're seeking the position that you're qualified for. So it might be good to have a few talking points uh, about why you think you're a good candidate. They might say, well, why are you interested in our company? Um, or they, uh, related to that is what do you know about our company? And as a college student, they're probably going to ask you, what's your professional goals? What, what do you want to do? And what they're thinking is, how does that align with us? How does that align what I can offer in this position? And is this a good fit? So some do's and don'ts on the day of the fair, dress professionally. If it's virtual, be sure and test your equipment ahead of time. Make sure your camera's working and the audio is working. Uh, no distractions. Um, make sure you're by yourself. Um, the, you know, no one else or, or if any part, other people are in your apartment or home that they're aware that you're doing, you're going to meet with a potential employer. Uh, animals, dogs, cats, you know, can often be a distraction. So, you know, maybe you put them in another room uh, for this. Check your schedule know when you're supposed to be at the various meetings that you've scheduled. It should all be nicely packaged in Handshake, but just make sure you keep track of that. Uh, and then be on time. You don't want to keep a hiring manager uh, waiting, uh, what, you know, like in a, in a virtual uh, meeting that you signed up for, like a one-on-one. -on -one. Some don'ts. Don't wait to the last minute to build your schedule. And that goes for virtual or in-person. Handshakes tells you who's going to be there and potentially what openings they have. So build your schedule out. Don't bail on employers. If you set up an appointment, uh, you know, be sure to be there. Um, it doesn't work well with a phone like a mobile device. So, you know, your laptop or a desktop um, would be ideal. Um, and don't uh, don't surround yourself with distractions. So try to be distraction free. So if you do have a one on one meeting with the hiring manager or an HR person, um, you know it's okay to ask them about next steps. You know, like um, you know they're interested in you, and you know they're saying, well, you know I, I I would suggest you do the following, but it may require you to ask the question, you know, what are the next steps? Is what are the steps in the recruiting and the hiring process? You can also offer to visit the recruiter or offer for another virtual meeting one on one. Ten minutes will go by like that um, in a virtual one on one session. Or if you're in an in person, busy, crowded career fair, it's going to be limited amount of time to talk to that person. So, you know, if, if it's a good fit and you're feeling good about this, ask them, say, would you be open to me visiting or would you be open to me setting up a one on one, uh, you know, teams meeting? Um, it's important to thank them, thank them for their time and ask for their business card or their contact information. And that, you know, let's say you meet with 15 people. Um, that helps you keep straight who all you met with. Uh, and also it provides contact information for a follow up note. So and where I'm going with that is within a day or two of meeting the person. It is. Highly recommended that you send a thank you note. I wanted to thank you for your time, for vis visiting with me at the career fair. I especially enjoyed our discussion about upcoming opportunities for data analysts. You know, I, I feel particularly qualified for this position because, you know, A, B, and C, um, you know, I, I look forward to, you know, possibly talking again. So a thank you note, and, and I have a paper version there, but an email is, is totally appropriate and probably quicker. Uh, I would say pa paper thank you notes are kind of kind of rare. Uh, there is some strategy in that, though, too, with uh, it's, it's kind of unique and it kind of makes people stand out. Uh, if, if I received a written uh, thank you note 
uh, addressed to me after a, a meeting, that would make an impression. Maybe you do both, uh, an email immediately and then a written note later on. LinkedIn is so powerful. LinkedIn markets you. LinkedIn allows you to connect with uh, 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 employers. It allows you to see jobs that are open. Hiring managers, recruiters are on LinkedIn all the time. There's also the alumni feature. If you haven't explored the alumni feature in LinkedIn, please do so. It's powerful. You can look up companies. You can look up individuals. All you have to do is follow UT Dallas and go to the alumni button. We have 130,000 alumni that are on LinkedIn. If you're a computer science major uh, and you want to do a certain, you want to be a, I don't know, let's say web developer and you want to work for Amazon, you can put all of those in or the alumni search feature, narrow it down and you can identify all the UT Dallas graduates that were at, you know, ECS that are web developers that work at Amazon. And then you can connect with them with a personal message. We call that informational interviewing. Um, and you, you, uh, that's the, that's where you prepare questions. It's not asking for a job. It's not asking for an internship. It's, I want to learn more about you. I want to learn more about your company. The worst that happens is you have a great learning experience, but they may say, well, what, where are you at? Are you, so you're a junior. What are you going to do an internship? And that's the opening for you to say, well, yes, I'm very interested in an internship. And they may say, well, you know, well, send me your resume. Or they may say, um, you know, uh, well, here, let me, let me give you the name of our HR person or the person that handles interns. You just never know what could happen through an informational interview. So, um, but in general, some follow up, you know, questions are, you know, what's the best way to follow up on this? Uh, identify those employers you're interested in. Thank you emails go a long way. Um, you know, if it's a company that feels like a good fit, uh, you know, keep an eye out on that company. Keep an eye out on Handshake. Uh, Handshake is updated every night at 3 a.m. and there's thousands of jobs that are listed on there right now and they pay money for that. They pay money for access to you. They like UT Dallas students. They're on there for a reason. Uh, so, you know, keep an eye out and you can filter Handshake with internships or jobs. Uh, and then there's all kinds of events. If you're really interested in Texas Instruments, they're, they host events all the time. So go to Handshake and see what those are and, and register. Uh, so Handshake, you know, we'll have the upcoming career fairs. I talked about that. So I do highly encourage you if you, if you want to talk more about anything that I covered or you want to get your resume reviewed or maybe you want to practice your elevator speech. We have five career consultants in the Career Center and they love to work with students. And you can set up a one on one appointment um, and, you know, please, this is, um, uh, it, it, you know, you, you don't have to, <laughs> I, I want to say this the right, we meet you where you are. So maybe you only have the first line of your elevator speech and you need help. That's what we do. So don't feel like you have to have a perfectly crafted resume. You, you've only uh, started, uh, but you want advice. Uh, you want resources. That's what we do. That's what we're here for. So, well, thank you uh, for uh, attending this. Uh, my name is Paul Krawitz. Uh, well, I thought I had, no, there's my email. Yeah. So there's my email. If you have any particular questions, um, you know, or concerns that you'd like to talk about, uh, there's my phone and my email. I'm very happy to, to answer uh, any questions. Uh, that you have later on. I, I couldn't really keep track of um, the the chat. It was on another screen, but um, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop presenting. So, right. Derek, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul.
Uh, I would like to open the floor up now to a, a little bit more of a formal Q&A. We got some great questions and some interactions in the chat. Thank you so much for that. I also like to uh, bring in Carly from Humcap if you want to come on and uh, talk a little bit about any recruitment trends or any advice that you may have for our fantastic students here in the chat. But I would just like to open it up to just sort of like an informal discussion. Anybody have any questions, comments, observations? Yes, I do have a question, um, Derek. Yes, so um, I've been thinking about trying to build my resume because I feel like my resume is not really good. Like it's just like empty right now. So I was just wondering like if I need some help on like trying to um, build it because I've done a couple of stuff like back in the past like um was it dang i forgot the word dang all right volunteering but it was like during my um high school and i'm pretty sure that i'm a sophomore now and the high school stuff won't really count on my resume anymore so i was just wondering if there's any way that i can like try and build that resume yeah kaylin i, I would recommend a one-on-one -on -one appointment with one of the career consultants and they, they can share excellent examples and resources, but they can craft it to you and kind of your, your background and your experiences uh, that make sense. I, I will say in general, you know, we, we start as a freshman and there may be high school uh, items on there, but they generally drop off with time. You know, as you do more at UTD, uh, the high school experiences start to drop off. Although, and, and volunteer work is powerful, uh, certainly uh, can be impactful on a resume. Uh, I did work with one student that wanted to become a clinical psychologist, and she had powerful volunteer experience with, with Genesis Women's Shelter and just saw impactful things. And, and she also worked um, teaching English to folks that have, uh, who are refugees. Um, so there's and and so and this resume was going for uh, toward an application for a, a clinical doctoral program in psychology. So there's certain times where just powerful, impactful things make 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 a huge impact on certain audiences, like an admissions committee. So that that's why I say a one-on-one -on -one meeting, and, and that way it can be very individualized for you. And, and highlight those experiences, you know, that, that would be impactful to the audience that you're applying to. Th thanks for the question. Thank you, sir. Oh, there's a question. Is there a way to provide resumes when it's virtually? So in Handshake, you have the ability to upload your resume and, and your account so you can it's almost like LinkedIn and Handshake, you'll have an account, you can add your picture, you can build out the various areas, but it al also has an upload feature. So I would, I would recommend take your resume, save it as a PDF, and then upload it um, to Handshake. And uh, employers can have uh, ability uh, to, uh, to view uh, your resume through there. Um, but if I'm meeting one on one, I might confirm that and I might say, you know, um, I just want to make sure you have my resume. Can I can I put it in the chat for you to make things easier? You know, go ahead and offer to 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 send it to them. Uh, I think that's, a, you know, a, a, it's a great way to, to just, you know, connect with them and, and give them the information and make it easy, uh, easy uh, on them. And, and Carly might <laughs> have some suggestions on as an employer kind of that that perspective carly feel free to jump in uh, if you'd like uh to uh, yeah. help your thoughts there we go yeah absolutely i was just going to make sure that nobody else had any questions before i started <laughs> so um and actually i've made a presentation so i'm going to share my screen as well and we can kind of get started um let's see okay and we can see this screen 
All right. Um, and so I, firstly, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for having me and I'm happy to present a little bit um, to give you some insight, not only to help you prepare for the career fair, but also just to tell you a little bit about myself and about HumCap and um, just kind of provide maybe some insight within the tech industry and also just within recruiting in general. Um, so to kind of get started, um, first, I will, um, you know, provide my name again, Carly with HumCap. Um, I'm also going to provide my QR code for connecting with me on LinkedIn. So that will always be on the left side of the presentation as we go through these slides. Um, and then if you find yourself interested in HumCap while I'm talking, um, feel free to use the QR code that stays on the right side of the screen throughout the presentation if you would like to um, check out HumCap's website and see our open job, re job requisitions. And um, also, you know, we're hiring as well. So we're hiring interns and we are also hiring um, uh, full-time employees. We also do a lot of recruiting for our clients as well, and I'll kind of get into that next. Um, so I was kind of also handpicked for a couple of reasons by HumCap, um, because I am one of one in HumCap who has these two things. The first thing would be a 2022 degree issued by UT Dallas, um, and then also a successful intern to hire story with HumCap as well. So I'll be also at the All Majors Career Fair next Thursday um, in person. So if you see us at the booth, come say hi um, and just know that we are hiring interns and full timers right now. To kind of tie that together. Um, so I, I work for a company called HumCap and we are a human resources services firm. And we also do tech recruiting for growing DFW companies that are, you know, just looking to, you know, get these hard to fill jobs, you know, filled by hopefully us that have the tools and the resources to get through um, kind of what we need there. So um, th we have two sides of the house and I've kind of touched on it. So the first side of the house is our recruiting side. So we do um, full-time searches, executive searches. We do tech recruiting for these tech jobs that are hard to fill. Um, and, and a lot of that happens on the first side of the house, which is recruiting. There's also a side of the business that we have, which is HR consulting. So we have a group of HR consultants that have about it, I think it combined about 200 years of HR experience in general. So um, these HR consultants go and help these growing DFW companies, not only with their recruiting needs that they might use our first side of the house for, but also any um, HR needs that they have outside of just talent acquisition. And if you're familiar with the HR umbrella, there are very many uh, different realms of HR. So um, it could be a project-based HR service. So um, there's an instance where we might write like an offer letter for candidates. We might draft an employee handbook for the company. <clears throat> or, um, you know, we might conduct like a, a company-wide training program as well. So we can um, conduct and deliver those. Um, we also can stand in as strategic HR consultants as well. So if there's a company that's trying to build out their HR um, department, we could stand in as the department of one until, you know, they're ready to kind of build that out and all of their processes are in place. Um, and again, we're hiring. So um, use the link on the right side of the page to check out our website and kind of see through our open job requisitions. They're combined with um, the jobs that we fill for HumCap and then also the jobs that we fill for us internally. So, um, you know, we're looking for recruiters, we're looking for salespeople, we're looking for HR people. So um, just go ahead and check that out. Use that link on the right side. Um, that is not all we do. So we are also very heavily involved with the DFW community and we have tons of great partnerships and ones that we're very proud of. Um, one that we hold very near and dear to our hearts are um, our partnerships that we have with UT Dallas. So we love the students that graduate from there, the boards that we sit on, and the unique opportunities for professional growth as well. Um, and also the exposure professionally that um, UT Dallas can offer its students too. Um, HumCap is actually involved with UTD. As I've mentioned, we do sit on a few different boards. So we are on the Veterans Board, um, we sit on the JSON Board, and then we're also on the board for the Johnson School as well. Um, we have a couple of scholarships going right now. So the first one we have is for um, veterans and then the 
Um, second one is for our first generation STEM students as well. So that was something that's really important, um, not only with us being so involved in the tech industry, we have a lot of market insights and um, can, can just provide you know, applicants, candidates, clients, all of this knowledge that we have from all the resources that we use. So um, definitely something that we're very proud of. Um, another thing that we love about partnering with UT Dallas is that we can gain access to your resumes early by, you know, applying as early as an internship level. Um, and not only that, we can we can help you find jobs in tech, too. So, um, you know, again, utilize the link to connect with me on LinkedIn, but also check out Humcap's company at LinkedIn and look for all of the recruiters that are in there, too, because we kind of specialize in certain pieces of tech. Um, so feel free to connect with them, ask them questions. We're always happy to help. We're not always just not going to talk to you if, if you're not going to fill our job or anything like that. So we're, we're very happy to uh, provide a little bit of insight and some extra uh, advice as well. Um, and, and just know that as you're navigating the job search, the internship, you're definitely not alone. Um, and, and we're here to help. And I think that's true of a lot of recruiters, especially ones that work in a staffing firm too. Um, so, so with this, I, I think I would like to kind of transition into the upcoming job fair that we have going on next week, um, both virtual and in person and HomeCap will be there next week in person. Um, but would love to transition into the upcoming job fair, how to prep for it. And this will kind of resonate a lot with what Paul was saying earlier. Um, and I was kind of adding in some little pieces and parts from the things that Paul has said. And um, just to kind of reiterate and uh, make sure that it all is sound and um, things like that. So anyway, without further ado, um, want to kind of help you guys prepare for this job fair from an employer's perspective. So um, the tips that I have are not only coming from myself, but also the rest of our recruiters here at HumCap too. So a lot of this is going to align with the Career Center's advice. Um, so I, I went to JSOM, I'm a graduate from JSOM, and I utilized the Career Management Center multiple times. Um, and shout out to Liz Chavez, she was actually somebody that helped me uh, build my resume and make it, you know, something that helped me land where I'm at today at HumCap. So I've got my internship and then I got my full-time offer upon graduation as well. Um, so this first section that you'll see on the top um, talks a lot about the um, new grad status. So when you guys are getting ready to graduate, there's going to be this kind of confusion bubble that you'll stand in and just kind of be like, okay, what what's next? What do I do? So, um, you know, we're, we're here to help you with that. And so is the Career Management Center, and they do a great job of getting you prepared. Um, but after you graduate, you're going to kind of find yourself hunting and, and you'll read through job descriptions and you'll see that entry level roles are actually requiring at least a year or more of experience. There's a lot of college students that are coming out of the, you know, of, of college and don't have that. So um, how do you navigate this? Is this really an entry level position? Is this something that, um, you know, I can break past even though I may not have that year of experience? So um, there's a fantastic recruiting coach that uh, we utilize and we've been to a lot of his training sessions and his name is Greg Dorshing. Um, he said in January this year that the most desired candidate level of experience is actually from three to seven years. So new grads aren't typically coming out with that type of experience, right? So, so we have to ask ourselves, how can we break through even to be considered for these entry level jobs or these jobs that are asking for three to seven years of experience? So the good news is if you're going into the tech industry or if you're considering it, um, this industry is very strong and it needs STEM students as and, and graduates just like you guys. So tech is actually the third hottest um, job right now behind, um, I think it's healthcare services and business um, professional services as well. Um, so, so it's in the top three and for every one candidate, there's at least three job openings. So definitely a hot commodity, um, very big deal. And especially for uh, first generation students as well. Um, the other good news is that um, in, in Dallas, there hasn't really been um, too much of a struggle in terms of, you know, like the layoffs that you see going on and recession and, you know, the big R word. Um, but 
you know, it's it's actually good news for Dallas because we haven't really seen any of that ramp down. So um, another great thing for first generation students and STEM students as well is that corporate America is really ramping up their DE&I efforts. And so they're generating a really highly diverse workforce as well. So there's a ton of opportunity out there. Um, as for the current open job market as well, there's about 10.7 million jobs open. I'll say that again, 10.7 million job requisitions are currently open and there are 6.4 million people unemployed as well. So this is huge news for new grads because this is a way that you can kind of break in and the strength right now in in applying for jobs is actually by volume, believe it or not. So, and it's not the, you know, click, 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 submit a resume, submit a resume and apply. I think the best way that you could um, put your best foot forward through these applications is to uh, tailor your resume and your cover letter to these job requisitions that are open. So if they're looking for a specific skill set or a specific coding language or anything like that, um, just to make sure that that's highlighted in your resume, at least somewhere. And, you know, when you score that interview, you're able to intelligently speak to it. Um, recruiters like us at Humcap are here to help students like you, and we're trying to help you guys break the barrier and, you know, enter that workforce, regardless of that three to seven years desired experience right now that's in the market. Um, so I've kind of compiled a list that will help you generally prepare for not only the career fair, but your potential job search, um, especially when you get close to that graduation stage. Um, so, so this advice can be extremely useful when attending the job fairs or even networking events. I think it all kind of blends together just because, you know, when you go to a career fair, you're also networking and, and, um, meeting new people and they may not be able to help you right then and there, but you know, they may be able to help you in the future. You just never know. So, um, a lot of the advice that I have may coincide with what the career center encourages as well. So there might be a lot of, um, reiteration, if you will. So the, um, the first and foremost thing that I would say for sure is to take advantage of the Career Center. It's there for a reason. Um, you know, these these people are very kind. They're not going to, you know, dog you for what your resume does or doesn't look like. Um, you know, they're not going to say, you know, oh, come back when your elevator pitch is finished. And, and Paul kind of reiterated that as well. And Derek. Um, so no matter how silly you feel like your questions may seem, they're not, and they're there to help you. And I hope that you guys take advantage of that as best you can. Um, my my first set of advice for breaking the barrier into this job search and this internship search as you navigate this is to master your elevator pitch. So like Paul was saying, it's very important that this is not only rehearsed, but understood and um, you know not robotic. So um, it's always best to assume that when, you know, you get into an elevator and you're all of a sudden, you know, one floor up, Jeff Bezos walks in. Um, it's it's very important to always assume that when you speak to somebody, they're interviewing you. So you kind of want to make sure that what you say is always putting your best business foot forward, especially in business and professional settings. Um, so practice it with your friends, practice it with your family, uh, make sure that that's something that you can speak intelligently to, and just be able to speak to it in a way that, you know, you believe it yourself. And the more you say it, and the more you look at yourself in the mirror, the more you practice with your friends and your family, you're going to believe that about yourself. Um, my, my second and probably biggest, um, set of advice that I would have for students, especially right now, and the earlier you can start, the better, is to get on LinkedIn. So if you don't have it already and you haven't taken a class, um, I think business communications is one of them that um, um, asks you to do a LinkedIn project as part of an assignment for the class. Um, make sure that when you do your LinkedIn, you're, you're keeping it updated. It's sound with your resume. Even if you take the points from your resume and put it into your LinkedIn profile as your work experience, you just want to make sure that it's always going to match what your resume says seamlessly. Make sure that, you know, you're updating it regularly. Um, you're involved with it as much as you would be on other social media platforms like, um, you know, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, even if you're just scrolling through, just make sure you take some time um, to look at LinkedIn as well, because there's a lot of people in the professional environments that are on LinkedIn, especially in business. 
Um, so with that, I would also recommend having a business professional photo. Um, so whether it's, you know, taken in a well-lit room with, you know, business attire or um, something that, you know, would be appropriate for work, I would say is highly recommended as well. So, um, and, and the reason for this is because when you're applying to jobs and I actually did like a mini poll with, with the Humcap recruiters yesterday as well. And 100% of our recruiters in the back all have LinkedIn open all day long in the background, along with the resumes that they're looking at. So what that means is when they're considering candidates for that job, they're looking at the resume that they see on file, and then they're going to social media. And actually, our database is linked to social media. We sign into the LinkedIn, we click a tab, and it pulls up LinkedIn, and I can have your resume in the same spot. And I'm making sure that when I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile, that your resume is also speaking to that, or it's at least coinciding with your jobs that you've taken, um, the titles that you've had at the very least is something that personally I look for, but I, I know that um, the other recruiters do as well. So um, that's why I think that LinkedIn is so important. So try to refrain from posting things that wouldn't put your best business foot forward, right? So um, want to make sure that, you know, you're not putting distracting content out there and um, making sure that it's relevant to the positions that either you're applying to or that the position that you're currently in um, working as is relevant. Um, and try to use LinkedIn as your professional um, networking environment versus something that you would use Facebook for, like maybe, you know, selling a pair of shoes on Marketplace. Um, make sure that you do post things that provide thought provoking input to your industry. And if you haven't already, I would recommend starting now. Um, this builds engagement, this builds your network, and this kind of helps people see that you're involved and uh, you care about the industry that you're in and that you're actively, um, you know, seeking out new trends in the market and in the community as well. Um, ask your coworkers or your professors that you know and that you interact with regularly for your professional recommendations. So there's a section on LinkedIn that has a professional recommendation section. And so what this means is that there are people that can basically gas you up, right? So these people are going to be the ones that um, you talk to regularly that can provide meaningful, thoughtful, and career transcending input. Um, this could be a professor of yours. This could be a supervisor of yours. It could be a colleague. Um, even somebody that you worked with like on a group project um, and you guys either led the team together or you felt like you meshed really well. Um, just somebody that can provide a few sentences, um, just, just pushing your career trajectory forward by putting you in a place that doesn't say, not only can I pitch myself via my elevator pitch, but also somebody can back that up and say, this is for sure what their skills are as well. Um, when you go to the career fair, one thing that you can do is um, you can get your LinkedIn QR code and um, what you can do is you can set it as your phone's lock screen. So this is the best way. Personally, I've used it. Um, I've, I actually went to a networking event where I ran out of business cards. And so what you can do is um, pull up your QR code on your phone for LinkedIn, just like you're um, connecting with me right now on on this presentation. And when you pull up that QR code, it pulls up the profile and then you can just immediately connect with people and add a note and just say, hey, thanks for meeting with me today. It was great to talk to you. Um, and, and this is an amazing way, especially for um, networking and professional environments as well to get connected with people immediately because you're providing that face-to-face -face recognition. And then also when people like me, like recruiters who check later on their LinkedIn and see, oh, you know, so-and-so is connected with me, I remember talking to them. Um, so, so this is something that personally, if, if I went to a career fair next week and students did this, I would be absolutely blown away. And I would probably be talking to you on the phone the next day or within the next hour about a position at Humcap. So, um, just kind of keep that in mind as well. Um, and then anytime that you send a connect invite, always try to provide a note as well. Even if it's just, Hey, thanks for talking to me at the career fair, career fair today. Um, looking forward to, you know, keeping in touch. 
that's as little as it needs to be. Um, but you know, get as many details as you can out in that little, I think it's like 300 characters that you get in that note. Um, so that's all I, I have for LinkedIn. The next thing would be the resume. Um, and I think the biggest pieces of constructing your resume in a way that gets results is by utilizing the, what's called the star method. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're using the star method, which is the situation, the task, the action, and the result um, sequence in which you can quantify your resume and make it, you know, a way that shows that you're impacting the company by, or you're impacting your schoolwork, or you're impacting your volunteer work by the things that you've done and the work that is relevant that you've performed. Um, so it's also important to quantify as many points on your resume as well. So if you, for example, worked on a group project, um, did you work with a team of five? Were you the group leader? Did you direct a team of five? So um, that's kind of a way that you can, um, you know, provide your leadership skills. Or if you were a presenter, did you present to 50 students? Um, so th these are just kind of tips and tricks to get your resume um, you know, out there and making it look a certain way where you get results as well. Um, bearing this all in mind, you don't want to have a single point on your resume be too long winded. So um, as, as much as you can keep it short, keep it simple and keep it to the point as much as possible. Um, and then be able to um, go into detail on that when you get the interview as well. So, you know, if it says directed a team of five on a presentation and presented or, and, you know, spoke with 50 people about it, um, go into detail in the interview about what the presentation entailed and how it's, you know, a little bit more relevant to the job that you're applying. Um, another advice for resumes as well. And I kind of touched on it earlier when I said to tailor your resume to the volume of jobs that you apply for. Um, making sure that you're adding certain common buzzwords as well with your job descriptions. So if there's a job description for a recruiter and, you know, I'm looking for a tech recruiter for Humcap, I'm going to look for things or uh, buzzwords, if you will, that say things like sources, recruits, uh, follows up. Um, so, so all of that is going to be something that I would look for in a resume and I would probably immediately get on the phone and call you. Um, and the last thing that I have for resumes as well is to proofread. So make sure that you're proofreading it at least twice and then have somebody else uh, proofread your resume as well and then rinse and repeat. So proofread at least four times, I would say. And like Paul mentioned, it's important that when you interview as um, when you're interviewing that you are interviewing the company as much as they are interviewing you as well. So be sure to ask questions um, about the company, about things that you find are important as well. So if professional career growth is important to you, um, you know, ask them not only if they have provided professional career growth for these um, candidates or these employees, but maybe ask them to provide examples. Um, if, if work-life balance is something that you value, um, see, you know, if there's a way that they can provide, um, examples of how they balance work and life for their employees. Um, and then finally, I would say follow-up is a huge, huge win for, um, any, any candidates, any candidates on the market right now, and anybody that is connecting, especially with recruiters, um, the more that you follow up with people, the more they'll remember you. So not only if you sent me a LinkedIn connection invite, but if you sent me an email right after and you attached your resume and said, hey, I heard you speak at the um, you know, Career Center, uh, prepare for the fair uh, virtual meeting. So wanted to give you my resume. I've already connected with you on LinkedIn. Just things like that are just, they're simple, but they're important and they're memorable. So um, you know, even if when you follow up, and, and even Paul touched on this as well, is by leaving the follow-up with a question. So whether this person has a job open for you to apply to, um, you know, it, is it important that, you know, you're a fit for the job as much as it is, can you provide some insight on the market? So um, just making sure that you're asking a question either way, whether it's for the job or whether it's for the market or, you know, if they can point you in the right direction because recruiters in general are very well connected. So I would highly recommend um, asking them if, if they can point you in the right direction because we're happy to do it. 
Um, and and though I do agree that also a written note would be super thoughtful, um, I, I think it would be best and probably more memorable as well to not only get that LinkedIn and that email connection, um, but if anybody ever sent me a written thank you note, I, I would remember them forever. So <laughs> if you find Humcap's address and, and you go through, you know, what the effort is to write a thank you note, I would absolutely be like, I would just be blown away. Um, so that would be totally awesome, but I can't say I've ever had anybody send me a postcard thank you note yet. So, um, anyway, um, I also just think that in general, the follow-up is very important. Um, but also I've kind of mentioned it as well. Connect with recruiters in general, connect with us. We're happy to help you, even if it's a job that you're not applying for with us. So if you're just like, Hey, can you review my resume really quick? Um, you know, I just graduated, um, want to make sure that, you know, X, Y, and Z is looking good. So we're happy to do that. We're happy to provide some insight, or even if you want to know, um, some market trends as well, we can kind of, um, help you navigate that too. And uh, with that, I I, I want to save everybody some time. So we, we have so many more recommendations. It's not something that I want to take up too much of your time on. And if you're interested, I'd be happy to you know provide further insight there too. Um, but I do want to thank all of you so much for your time today. Um, we're glad to be involved with the UT Dallas community. We look forward to being at the fair next week. Um, and again, if you missed any of the QR codes, um, go ahead and utilize those. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, check out our website. Check out the jobs we have open. Um, there are some entry-level jobs in there as well, I believe, in the tech world. Um, but personally, I work in internal recruiting as well. So I know that we are definitely hiring new grads and entry-level interns um, for our recruiting side of the business. So um, with that come and see me at the booth on September 15th at the career fair. Um, I'll be at the all majors one and I look forward to meeting you guys in person. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you joining us. That was such valuable information. And again, just to buttress all of your points, like I experienced the most success uh, during my job search, especially post graduation. Um, by utilizing these tips. These are tips that I wish that I had have known uh, when I was in your position. And I definitely wish that I took advantage of the Career Center more often and earlier in my career. So I really hope that this gives everybody the confidence and the comfort to engage with the, both the Career Center and these career fairs next week. Uh, I did drop a short little eval in the chat. If you don't mind, please fill that out for us. Uh, because we really appreciate your feedback. It's because of your feedback, that valuable first-gen feedback, that we have events like this. So definitely let us know how we're doing. Let us know how we can improve. And because it's a collaboration between us and the students that we serve. So really appreciate everybody joining us this afternoon. Please feel free to reach out to, uh, to us, to Paul, to myself, to Courtney, to Carly, to everyone here who's supporting your success. Uh, and say hi at the at the career fair. I'm gonna try to uh, to stop by. Um, I know that uh, my brother works for Ally Financial. He told me uh, to let you all know that he will be there, and uh, I can I can put in a good word too if that's uh, if that's something you're interested in. So, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, have a great rest of your week, and we will see you at the career fair.